Hey everyone, welcome to week 68. Today is day one. This is Monday. This is the first day. New week, new theme. And the theme for this week is going to be called remnants. So let's see what that means. Okay, let's get started. This is going to be day one. This is the first day on our new week, which means new theme. The theme for this week, we're going to call it remnants. I think it's important for me to have a week like this one, especially following last week where we were trying to expand our horizons. I was genuinely hopeful that because of last week, I would be able to find alternatives in my painting that would drive me, would propel me into new directions, and my painting was just going to burst open with possibilities. It was going to be a new world this week. I was going to be a new painter. Amazing things were going to happen. Fireworks, angels, the whole works. The reality is <laughs> that it's not quite like that. You know, maybe, maybe we have paintings at some point in our careers that are truly important. You know, they are turning points. And even though if I look back, I think I've had plenty of those paintings. I don't know if the change is that sudden. I don't know if I could spot the effect of that painting, the incidents that that particular painting had on my future paintings as quickly as I would have desired it to be. It's not about making that single painting where you are more courageous than the paintings prior to that one. And then suddenly you're filled with this inner strength that you didn't possess before. And now you're just attacking paintings and tackling problems that you didn't know that you had the fortitude to tackle. I wish I could say that it was that easy, that it was like a switch, where if you're finally able to turn it on, then your painting immediately changes. What I've noticed, and perhaps this is just my path, you know, maybe your painting practice has developed in a very different way, but... I can only speak for my path. So in my journey, I've noticed that when I have those sort of paintings, by the way, this is no easy feat. I mean, we are very lucky when we have those opportunities and when we seize those opportunities and we tackle them head on and we don't shy away from them and they pay us back in incredible ways because what we are going to be able to learn from those paintings, honestly, is just invaluable. But I was saying how lucky I am because... I don't think it's easy to get to those paintings. I don't think it's an easy thing. I don't think that those breakthrough moments appear constantly. I mean, they're not supposed to appear constantly. It's not like we can have breakthrough paintings every other week. That's not how it works. And the reason it's not how it works, it's because when we are able to literally break through those parameters that were holding us back, there has to be a time after that where we try to make sense about what happened. Why did this painting work? What was I trying to do? Because maybe sometimes our intent is completely different than what the outcome of the painting is. And we got there just by accident. And that's fine. I've always felt that being lucky in art is just part of making art. That's part of the nature of any creative process. And it is up to us to identify when we hit something. I mean, we can either hit it because it was our intent, that was our objective all along, or we can stumble upon it, and that's totally fine. There are no rules in art. We're not cheating if that happens. We're very lucky, but then we have to be responsible. And what that means is that we have to identify why something worked and we have to see if it was something special, something that's going to be just a, a one-off thing, or if it's going to be something that I don't want to say we can replicate because this is not about mass production. That's when you kill the things that are interesting that can happen in your painting practice. So it's not about this consistent production but it's about identifying why something works. And then it's a lot of trial and error where you try to introduce those elements onto other paintings. You can't force them onto other paintings. That's also very important. But what you're trying to evaluate is seeing if what happened there can be something that sort of infects your painting, that it can start spreading through your painting because a single painting is not enough. I mean, it's not at all enough to say that we've fully explored the possibilities that that painting holds within. So many times we have to do a series of paintings. We have to do tens of paintings to see where the limits of that essence that worked inside that painting lie in. 
we have to identify those parameters. And the only way to go about it is by doing more paintings. And when we do a lot more paintings, we risk taking something that was very special, that was very unique, and we start repeating it. And sometimes we start repeating it superficially so much that it just loses its weight, that it loses its power. And it's very sad because many times we work so hard trying to get to that painting to finally be able to reach that painting that is going to open up so many doors for us that after that, we are the ones that end up harming ourselves. We are the ones that end up almost making a caricature of what we found with that painting. And the other paintings start feeling like knockoff versions of that OG painting. So this is a very complicated thing. When we have breakthroughs, when we have paintings where we step back and we say, wait, wait, something happened here. And many times we're completely blind to what has happened. I mean, we can tell, we can instinctually say, wow, this is a nice painting. There's something different going on here. There's something super interesting. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> and we have to spend time with that painting. We have to spend time with ourselves and we have to try and understand what just happened. As I was saying last week, the one thing we cannot rush is time. So the way I wanted to tie this week with last week, for me, it's super important that when possible, this is not possible for every single week that we've done, but when possible, it's very nice if we could link up the weeks. It's very nice if the painting process feels like one connected act. We may stray from time to time and we may do formal exercises that ask of us to do something that's a bit different, but it's always good to try and link everything up just so that we feel that we are integral painters. This is not just us being like an octopus and that every single tentacle is just doing like a different painting. If we're doing that, we're just all over the place and it's going to be very difficult to tie everything together. But if we make an effort to link past experiences with present ones and hopefully set up future ones, I think that's a way where we can give ourselves the best shot at making a solid project. And Our Painted Lives is our project, but I'm speaking about projects in a broader sense. Projects in the sense that our painting practice could be our life project. So to me, it is very important that decisions come from somewhere, they stem from somewhere. And they're not just born out of the blue, out of Capris, where we're just doing things because we want to try them out. I mean, that is absolutely valid. And I've always said, yeah, there's a time and a place for all those things. And if you want to do that, that's totally fine. That's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But my hope is that every single exercise that we do has a sense of being. Remnant this week means we are going to settle down. We're going to inhale and exhale. And last week was a bunch of exhaling. Last week, we had inhaled, we had puffed our chest with energy and courage. And last week was about pushing that air out and just seeing what happened. And it was a ton of fun. And I think that if that was the sole purpose of our project, pushing like crazy every single week, just trying to find possibilities, throw everything at a painting, turn everything upside down and dig in deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. That's a very exciting place, but that's a very abstract rabbit hole that you could fall into. And for me, I have to have a sense of footing every single time. I have to ground myself. That's why I think last week in one of my Instagram posts, I wrote about grounding myself and how I always love these adventures, but I know that I love them because there's a home base. There's this idea of home that I love to return to when I'm done. It's almost like going out on these Ulyssian journeys, but I need to come back home and then go to a pub and tell people about those journeys and say, this is what I've been through. I love that moment where you come back. I've always imagined, and this is a bit of a tangent, but you, you guys know that these happen from time to time uh, or every day. <laughs> But I've always imagined what would painting be like if it suddenly disappeared. Let's say it disappeared off the face of the earth. There's no traces of painting in the whole world. And all we're left with, all we can do is just speak about paintings. And we educate a young generation through speaking about paintings. All we can do is just try and tell these stories about what a Rembrandt felt like and why it was amazing. And in my mind, it would be so incredible 
to see how painting could be re-signified and how it could be reinterpreted in my mind. I don't know if I'm more excited about the idea of painting never existing from then on and just being the subject of these fabled stories, or if I enjoy the idea of thinking about how this phoenix painting would be reborn and what would that look like. If there's no expectations of what painting is, what would painting look like? I'm always fascinated by those things. So for me, this idea of leaving something behind and then the word remaining, you know, the tale remaining, the thought remaining is very, very important. And when I have exercises like the ones that I did last week, I always tell myself, okay, next week is going to be tough, not because it has to follow up something that was cool to do or fun to do or that people enjoyed. But for me internally, what's important is that something remains from what I did last week. And hopefully it's not something that's just formal. It's not something that's just tied to technical aspects of the making of the painting. Because those things can be so easily replicated that they can become, or they run the risk of becoming incredibly superficial very, very quickly. So I'm also very wary of knowing that if I do something that works, I just can't squeeze the life out of it and just do dozens of paintings like that one after that because then paintings lose their meaning and lose their strength and lose the power that they have to communicate. Weeks like this one are different. They have to be a little more solemn. I have to calm myself down. There has to be a quiet nature to the work that I do because if not, if it's loud again, if I just turn everything up to 11, my eardrums are going to burst. I'm not going to be able to hear anything in like a couple of weeks. So it is important for me to ground everything and to say, calm down, calm down. It's not that I'm holding myself back and I don't want my painting to explode into the supernova of possibilities, which are amazing. No, no, I have to accept that I don't have that personality. There are people out there that are super experimental and they are amazing. They are tasked with pushing things forward. I don't know if that's my case. I sometimes feel that my role in all of this is just to communicate how unexpected and weird and consistently hard all of this is, how you think you have solved things because you've done plenty of paintings where you feel like you got it, like you finally deciphered this thing. And then suddenly the simplest of problems turns your brains into mush. <laughs> So I think my role here is to tell you guys, you know what? I'm going to train my ass off and I'm going to be ready for this fight every single time. But don't expect me to be this undefeated fighter. You know, I'm not going to retire undefeated. I know that for sure. I'm not Rocky Marciano, not at all. I am full of doubt. I'm full of insecurities. I'm full of defeats. And I think that those have made me stronger. Those have made me realize that, oof, this thing is never going to be easy. It's always going to be a pain in the butt. And that's what's fun about it. That's what's incredible about it. It's always going to be challenging. And the only way I can deal with it being challenging is by pushing myself to say, take your time to identify what you've learned. Don't just grab all the superficial things that are shiny don't just pick those up and say, yeah, I can put these in a painting. I can put lipstick on these pigs of paintings that I'll do from now on. No, that doesn't work. Or maybe it works for like a little bit, but then eventually it's still a pig. What has to happen is that you have to say, why did something work? And you have to dig in deeper. And every time you answer something that seems easy, you have to tell yourself, okay, but why else? Why do I think that I'm being moved by this? Why, why, why? We have to incessantly just question ourselves because many times we'll reach a place where we realize, okay, I don't have an answer for this or my answer for this is completely prejudiced or completely biased and I have to check myself or I have to educate myself. As much as we can find wonderful places and make incredible discoveries about ourselves, we can also find dark places, you know, things about ourselves that we didn't want to unearth or discover and we have to deal with those. That's what this is about. This is about painting, but this is about life. So again, super important for me to examine what happened last week, to think of this week as very simple, quiet time, where last week there was a bunch of flashy things going on that can be super attractive and can definitely work. In terms of images, they can definitely work. But 
For me, painting is not always about making flashy stuff. Sometimes I don't have the energy to do those. Mind is not in the right place. And sometimes I want paintings to feel differently or to be about something else. You know, it's like waking up. Not every day you're just feeling bubbly and happy. Sometimes there's shitty days and your painting doesn't have to be a shitty painting. You know, it can actually be a kick-ass painting, but it can reflect that you were in a shitty place. You can make a fucking amazing painting even if you're feeling down. You know, we have that power. That's what's incredible about painting. It can help us overcome a ton of things. We have to teach ourselves how not to see it as a job, how not to see it as this thing that, oh, I have to wake up and paint today. Like, this is my job. This is what I have to do to live. I have to paint in order to make money, in order to make rent. You know, if you pile all these responsibilities on top of painting, we're all going to buckle underneath all that weight because that's not manageable. That's impossible. What I've tried to do is think of painting just as my dog, at least in your heart. I hope you're all dog people. Doesn't matter how bad that day was. Doesn't matter how low you are, how dark that place is. That dog is going to wag its tail and lick your face. Maybe some of you find that disgusting. That's okay. I think of my painting as company. Every single time that I need it to be there, it's there. It's right there for me. And I can't tell you how amazing that feels. Like that is probably one of the most powerful things I've ever felt in my life. And I think that in order for it to remain that way, in order for it to be my lifelong partner, I have to put in hard work. And it's not just about Waking up and painting, that's the easy part in the end. If you enjoy painting, nobody has to force you to paint. You just paint out of love. The hard part is when you have to sit down and say, what the hell just happened last week? Those were some cool paintings. And I'm not talking about my paintings last week. Let's just say that you had a good week and you had a breakthrough painting. But you have to sit down and say, let me see if I can make sense of all of this. And let me see if I can identify what truly remains after I painted this painting. It can't be the painting. For me, turning the page and forgetting about is like the easiest first step. You kind of have to be willing to do that, to say, okay, let's forget about the painting, what the painting looks like, what the subject matter is, how I painted it. Forget about that super quickly. And now let's start talking about the painting. And I think that this week is going to be a little bit about that, about saying, quiet down, let's look into painting, and let's try to find that center again. So this week, I think, is going to be full of very simple paintings because what I hope, I mean, it's always my hope, is that in the end, when we try to do this whole exercise of identifying what is valuable about an experience, it's very important that we're able to explain those things to ourselves in a very simple manner. In order for us to hold on to those things, they just have to be easily understandable. So remnants this week refer to those tiny little essential things that we're going to hold on to, but that we're only going to be able to reflect upon them if we settle down. And, you know, it was my decision for this week to just do very simple paintings. I hope it makes sense. I really do. I know that it's difficult. I know there's a ton of people that were saying, Yes, you know, you got to push every single week. Like every week has to feel like a step above what you just did. Like it has to be more, it has to be louder, it has to be more colorful, weirder, wackier. And no, that's not going to happen. I, I hate to disappoint people, but that's not going to happen. At least with me, you know, I'm not that type of painter. But I can assure you that I am going to give it a ton of thought and that I'm going to reflect upon it and that. A lot of the cool things that happened with some of the paintings that I not only did last week, but paintings that I did years ago and paintings that are part of this project that I did months ago, they're all going to be part of this growth. They're all going to be part of this process and they're all helping me in constructing this road, this solid journey that I could travel confidently through. That's going to be it for today. See you guys tomorrow. Remember tomorrow, Martes de Español, Spanish Tuesdays. Brush upon your Spanish. I'll see you tomorrow. Love you all. Bye.